Okay, question number one. A preliminary draft of the new Ascension Parish Master Plan was presented to the Planning and Zoning Commission and Parish Council last year. Were you, in general, in support of that plan, yes or no, and part B, why or why not? I guess I'll have to lean more to the no side. Uh, I'm definitely for a plan. I'm not silly enough to know it as fast as our, grow, our parish is growing. Uh, no, 20 years will be over 200,000. We have to have a plan. We have to, we have to plan our growth, our smart growth. Uh, uh, there was some things in the plan. That's why I said yes or no. But there were some things I was for. I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't just totally for the whole plan. So, answering this question, I'd have to say no. I do say we have to come back with a very good plan. We have to have planning for how our parish is going to grow and move forward. Whether it be on building homes, traffic, or whatever, we have to have a plan. Uh, we did have uh, several meetings, 11 district meetings, with, and the key word is, it was a plan. A plan that can be tweaked, pulled off, added to. Never could happen at these meetings. Y'all all saw them. It was a complete circus. We didn't get a lot of comments. So we're going to go back and revisit it. There's no doubt. Uh, got to have a plan. The fastest growing parish in the state, we have to be ahead of all uh, of our things will be happening to us. Thank you. I was, <laughs> I was, frankly, in general, in favor of that plan. I thought that it did need a considerable amount of tweaking and work. I thought it needed a lot of expounding upon, particularly in the area of transportation, sewer, I think it was lacking somewhat in that. But the question is, were you in favor of it in general? And so I would have to say, yes, I was in favor of it in general. I would say no. Um, my reasons are, in general, I'm not a fan of outsourcing things to other areas. I'd like them to be formed in our area who knows our issues, knows our traffic, knows all of our issues. We are a unique area. Um, so in general, I'm a fan of keeping stuff more local. I think the people need to be involved in what they said. Um, there was meetings and they were kind of circus. And I think in general we need to pull in the public's opinion more in everything um, that is, you know, why we have a council to represent our areas. Um, first, I want to thank y'all for inviting me here, and I, I would ask this with a, no offense sitting at all, resoundingly no, and here's why. Um, as has been said by the speakers, it was in a plan for an outside consultant was paid to come and take a look at it. I looked at the plan, and to me, it was pretty much cookie cutter. You could put any city in America pretty much on it. I think that's incorrect. As a student of multicultural diversity and a trained trainer, a master trainer of multicultural diversity trainers, one of the things we said when the federal government came in and said, you know what, you have to have a diversity initiative at the university. Okay. If you let the federal government tell you how to do it, then you get what they tell you. If you let the people do it, I think you get a better product. So I'd be against it just because that plan did not have enough um, public involvement. And I might say as a sitting planning and zoning commissioner, we tried to get the public involved in it. We sent it to the parish council for funding. Fortunately, we chose not to do that. We sent it to strategic planning. So I guess we're in a waiting period after the election. But I can tell you this, things almost always work better when there's significant public input. Thank you very much. Uh, as a plan, as uh, Mr. Fondo said, that uh, the preliminary plan was a draft. Absolutely, I was for it. Uh, because we do need a master plan in this parish. We held a series of meetings to take that beginning of the master plan and get input from everyone. Get their input and mold it into what was needed for that parish. Nothing was written in stone. The very first words that were said at each meeting was this is a draft of a master plan for Ascension Parish. Uh, we held uh, meetings and uh, held uh, requests for proposals for different firms to come in and represent themselves. We had representatives of the Chamber of Commerce, people in the parish. Uh, whenever we announced
announce this uh, group that guides us through this process. Uh, there were probably 100 and 115 people in the Lord Dixon, all excited about us starting the process. Uh, and we stopped in the middle of the process. I, I wanted to allow the process to finish. Of course, the council was concerned that we had no timetable for it at that point. Uh, we would go through a whole series of meetings, get some input, modify our plan. Uh, if it took another series of meetings, we'd be glad to modify the plan some more. Uh, you know, what's funny, this is being done by some of the same people in St. James, the Livingston, Freeport. Look around right now at all of the different parishes in Louisiana that have very unique cultures that are being done the very same thing right now to find out in order to do, to really have uh, proper growth that's beneficial for people in parish, you have to plan. So that's what we want to do. Could y'all try speaking a little more directly into the microphone? Because I'm having a little bit of a difficulty hearing you. Okay, second question. The Ascension Economic Development Corporation, AEDC, their budget was recently cut. Do you think this group lived up to their expectations and would you support their needed funding? Yes or no? Why or why not? We're going to start this time with Terry. Thank you for that. In fairness, I must confess that I'm a member of the Ascension Economic Development Board of Directors. Didn't have any idea that this question is the second one. Uh, in the use of our resources. I did also want you to know that in order not to politicize that body, Ascension Economic Development Corporation, uh, when I qualified for, as a candidate for this seat, I decided that I would temporarily take a leave of absence. I do not think that economic development should be a politicized role, have a politicized role in the parish. It's the public private arm of the parish. And when, a, when, a, when a site selection committee comes in, they want to deal with people, not politicians. Okay. Um, this is a difficult question for me. I haven't, I have to be honest, I haven't done the complete research in this area. Um, and I don't until I do that research, I don't like to give a yes or no answer as to whether I think something is properly funded or you know, whether it should have been cut. So, yeah, that's a difficult question. Um, I think that it's a very important aspect to our to our parish, and um, yeah, I'm just not answering that question with a lack of research I have done on it. Um, I, I, there's no need to reestablish what, what Ms. Castle said, um, and I agree the track record is very good for AED. The question is, can we justify funding it at its current level or more? And, and I guess one answer would be, we all know the economic climate here isn't good. Your business, or just funding organizations to do good work and bring more economic development to the parish and so forth. Um, I don't think they get the question, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you folks that you have to do it outside. I'm more for infrastructure guided growth, or what I'm calling, as I campaign, responsible growth. And so I think it's important that when we do the budgets at the parish council level, that's why I seek a position there. It's frankly been to me without feeling for me at the planning zoning commission, because all we can do is make recommendations and they're developing authority. And I would like to see more of our budget dollars spent on infrastructure, which I think would help you guys um, greatly. And I can tell you why, you know, if I had more than two minutes, um, we could talk about smart growth concepts, so forth and so on. But there's no denying uh, AED has a good track record. This Castle gave some pretty fabulous millions of billions of dollars over a longer history since their inception in 2006 and you know, they've done recently. Um, so we really be good shepherds, I think, right now in our money to be sure that we can make it in a long haul. Thank you very much. I think that's a great question. Uh, I was out, I was out, I voted for the, the cutback in front of the Ascension Economic Development Company. I also voted to cut back on the funds that had the last two budgeted years uh, for the East Ascension Council. Two years ago, we received $7 million more than we have this year on our budget, for, uh, the operating budget for the parish. 
$7 million for it. And we had to cut back, and we did. Because we stay within our budget. We believe in, staying, in only spending what you take in. And so we cut across the board all of the different entities uh, throughout the parish by the same amount. Economic development was one of them. We also was very cognizant of the fact that Gonzales has come in now, the city of Gonzales has come in and added money. So their overall budget uh, stayed about the same. So uh, it was something that was, it was we thought very important. Uh, for that economic development, I was, myself and one other councilman, uh, worked very hard with uh, a group of four people to help establish economic development. And I've been an ex officio member of the Economic Development Corporation uh, since that time with a brief uh, period of uh, two years that I've worked on that. Uh, very much a strong supporter of that because that in turn gives us the tax dollars that we need to build infrastructure, to put things in, to, to be organized, to have smart growth. Uh, where are we going to do these things? Have somebody looking behind the scenes <coughs> about where to place these large economic ent entities and also what to do with our current businesses. How can we help them? It's very, very important with Economic Development Corporation. And we're doing a lot of research and helping local businesses that are established now to help make them better. Very good, Ken. I took the words out of my mouth. I agree wholeheartedly with what was said by Councilman Schechtsnyder. We came through rough times. Thank God for our administration. We had to stay ahead of the problem. To see it coming, made cuts. Since the Paris State is strong as anybody in the state of Louisiana. Our audit that just came through uh, two or three months ago, Falk and Winkle, I'm sure you're all aware of that. The strongest parish in the South. We had a, a zero marks on the audit, the strongest audit ever. CNN News is how they said it. We end up with an $11 million surplus because of the planning. Down the line, as we get stronger and stronger, certainly there'd be more money to give out to some of the organizations that were cut. And it was all of them. It wasn't anybody pinpointed. It might be the, the Boy Scouts that were getting 2500 They were cut 20% also. On down, volunteer ascension, on down the line. But we... I'm just very proud to be a small, small member of a team that, that uh, had the foresight to foresee the economic uh, failures coming, and we, we stayed uh, ahead of the game. Uh, you probably asked, how can you get $11 million service? And three years ago, we had 300000 Things were done, with, uh, whether it be leasing everything from typewriters to drag lines, in-house engineering, and on down the line. It was, uh, it's just outstanding what... Paris government has done to put us in the shape we're in right now in these hard times. Uh, certainly economic development, I mean, they, I go to meetings every two weeks with them. It's unbelievable what they're doing, what they're attracting to the area. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, but they're all bringing in the businesses. It's, a, it's a really a great, uh, and, and for them being cut like they were, they're <coughs> producing even more, that tells you something right there about the, their leadership and their board also. So I'm very happy uh, to be a small part of it, and uh, good things are, are coming for economic development also. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Tiffany, everybody's calling your name, but I need this much. Um, a comprehensive parish water and sewer system has been discussed for years with funding often prohibited, prohibiting its implementation. Would you support necessary funding at this time to make this project begin without typical delays? Yes, no. is um, as far as what is the plan um, you know I can't say yes I want to fund something when I don't have the plan laid out for me so um, yes it needs to be done it needs to be done right away 
um, just, I, I, I need to have a plan that's going to work and be effective and um, financially responsible. Okay, comprehensive parish-wide sewer system. If you look at my push card, it's one of the top bullet statements. Unfortunately, it's been one of the top bullet statements on just about everyone else sitting up here that's either incumbent or even our parish president. I can show you that back in 1996, which I carry around the car with me. So I say give someone else a chance. Uh, I realize that we said we were just doing, as Bell said, we're doing really good in the budget and so forth. We are. I wonder why we have to put that infrastructure in, which would include comprehensive um, parish-wide sewer system. I, for example, bog down almost weekly when it rains in my front yard because I have low dead treated sewer, just like most of the people in my district. It goes right into the front gutters, carried by culverts where I am, it goes into the bike man shack. A little further south for me, by your good and so forth. We can ill afford to keep doing this. This is crazy. In fact, the EPA is going to mandate this. Everyone knows it. Eddie Lambert talks about it in front of the parish council. Your rep, my rep, all the time. And when they, mar when they mandate it, not just for our parish, but for all parish across the state of Louisiana, we're going to hit a financial crisis that this budget is not going to be able to We need to do this. We need to quit promising to the people. It's been promised for 15, 20 years, whatever the number is. I know I've been where I live 18 years off of Old Perkins Road. Every year they promise my bride and, and myself a parish wide sewer system. Every year we have a stake in my front yard. It's time to fix this. Let's get about doing it. Saturday, I agree with you that this is one of the biggest challenges that we have, and yes, I am for it 100%. <clears throat> it's not going to happen overnight. This started in the 80s, in the 70s. It was turned out with a 90% federal uh, monies, 5% state match. Paris was only there to spend 5%. People who think the Paris turned it down because some hard decisions have to be made. Uh, we have generated, without going to the public for tax, $19 million plus $5 million loan to get the start of uh, the comprehensive sewer plan, is to get us a plant that will give water to the Mississippi River. It has taken a long, it taken four years to get that through. We had to get designed through the Corps of Engineers, we had to get permits, uh, and, uh, as you know, our government, it takes years, not months, to get this through. And we've been working consistently through that. We've also, for the first time, have set aside and set up a utilities uh, department with our rules and regulations in place, which took us about two years of negotiations to try to come to that point where we have an active uh, utilities department, we have rules and regulations, we have our definitions of what does this mean and what does that mean. So we are moving fast. We are moving forward. It's going to take about 20 years to get the plan through. It's going to cost, I would venture to say, between 250 and $300 million. We have to try to generate that money. And it's easy to come up here and say that, yes, we are all for it, because there's a hundred ways to do it. But whenever you get a plan that you may not like one little part of it or something, we're going to all have to rally around that plan because we have to move forward in order to move forward. Some people are going to have to give a little bit. All of us on the council is going to have to give a little bit so we can come up with a plan that we can stomach and move forward with so we can get this. Well, I'm trying to three start in November, the three lane all out front of Dutchtown School. It will come from the interstate out to the airline. At that time, we will start laying $3 million worth of soil pipe. We had $20 million delivered to us by the DEQ at a council meeting. I had to put Coach Paul Mandari on hold and accept the check because they came early. But uh, our plan is coming in place. We are going to the north first, the northern end of the parish, laying pipe. It's going to take, it won't happen overnight, as Ken said. It might take two years to get all the pipe in. But we do have $20 million with more promised in January. That's the route we're going. It's, it's not a wish list anymore. It's happening. We've got our money. We're on our way. So I just want everybody to know that. I'm certainly telling everybody that out in the parish. It's uh, people are in a, a fall. Well, you know, it's been talked about for 20 years. Certainly. 20 years ago, they had a plan. The people voted down. But now we don't have that luxury, so to speak. We don't be mandated like Baton Rouge and have to spend an $850 million plan and have five years to do it, or you find a million dollars a month. 
No, we're moving forward. When they brought the check, they said we're going to proactive parish in the state. That's why we got ten million dollars more than anybody else. That was very good news. So, you know, the eyes are on us, and we're going to take advantage of it and move forward. Thank you. I can only ditto what most of these folks have said. I think we absolutely desperately need a city council. I think that goes back to also needing a comprehensive master plan with transportation. We cannot build a road and then dig it up and put sewer underneath it. We have got to figure out how to do this in a comprehensive way so that we are not wasteful of the money that is going to be hard to come by. $19 million, folks, out of 300 to 500 million to do this project is a drop in the bucket. We are not going to make a lot of progress at any kind of breakneck speed, and anyone who will tell you that this can be done in a short order is not being realistic. So I would certainly think we need it, but we need to, a comprehensive plan with which to do it. Okay, fourth question, and we'll start with Doc. So, um, the present planning and zoning commissioners have often been in conflict with members of the parish council. Do you think the present planning and zoning commission has maximized their intended potential? Yes or no, and why, why not? That's such an appropriate question for me because I am a single member of the planning and zoning commission, and. Um, I told the parish president in an interview when I first was seated, um, which by the way, that's the point of position by the parish council, that I thought pretty much the parish council and the planning and zoning commission, I was joining at the time, that's just 10 months ago, had lost trust with the people. And trust me, the pun intended, trust is gone. And in fact, the last time in 10 months, I think it's gotten even worse. Again, we're an advisory body. We do not make law. We only make recommendations. I and a couple of my commissioners actually go out and see all the properties. We don't get paid to do this, but we go out there. It's actually a net negative income for me because of gasoline and so forth. Then we send these recommendations up to the parish council. And unfortunately, almost invariably, all too often for sure, and unreasonably, things like the master plan we talked about are tabled using the breaches of their own bylaws, province rules of order, and so forth and so on. So the communication gap and that trust is gone between the council and the parish, and the planning and zoning commission, as well as between those two groups of the people. Why? We do all this work, we send recommendations, it goes nowhere. It's almost as if the parish council right now is, pardon the expression, hell-bent to just go ahead and make the decisions for the appointed body that they empowered to make those decisions. If that makes any sense. This has to stop. When I become a councilman in District 4, I will reach back out to the colleagues I leave behind in the parish planning and zoning commission and say, I remember how it was then, here's how I want it to be now. Thank you very much, very interesting question. Uh, and then, Gary, yeah, what, what, what is your question? Yes, it's not really that's the one. Well, the, uh, do you think the present Planning and Zoning Commission has maximized their intended potential? Okay. No, absolutely not. As Scott Saturday said, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission, of which I was uh, a part of at one time, I was on the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, so I, I know the in and out of Or <clears throat> advisory committee, and they also uh, are appointed by the council, just like you, uh, and, and end up being like an outreach arm uh, for the council. And it should reflect uh, the council's uh, ideas and thoughts as much as possible. And what the planning and zoning should do is we have a set of laws and rules and regulations that are set down. And when you come before the planning and zoning, their job is to see that either those laws and rules and regulations are followed or not. And streamline the situation so that you can move forward with whether it's an individual development or a larger scale development where you can come. If my plan is appropriate, we have a group that checks it out, they check it out, and let's move forward. And so you can do the project or send it back. No, it's not appropriate. You didn't be you didn't be the qualification that you're supposed to, 
uh, send that back and, and let's, let's move on. Make these changes and let's move on. People in business, I'm a God school teacher, I'm in business. People in business doesn't mind regulations, doesn't mind rules, but what we want to do, we want to know them up front, we want to know that if we meet them, we can move in an expedited manner. Don't hold me up on a project for a long period of time because we're haggling back and forth over the if and what's to get this project done. Uh, so that's important that, that we follow those guidelines and do this in the proper manner. I agree wholeheartedly, Ken. What I can add to this is for, I, I appreciate anybody that's on a commission. It's a volunteer job. I certainly do. I, I think that in, in the case of our planning and zoning, I think we've dropped the ball in, in some instances. We've hindered growth. We've hindered projects. We've delayed projects for months. Uh, I think we need more education on that board. They, most of them think they're elected officials. They make the law. I mean, that's, the, that's my opinion and several other people that I've talked to. It's, uh, we have a long ways from getting where we need to be with planning and zoning. I don't want to see anything hurt this parish as far as growth. I want it to be done. We have ordinances in place to protect us. I think they need to uh, circumvent the law, which is happening in many cases. Thank you. Short answer is no. I don't think they're maximizing their potential. I think that the, the whole planning and zoning debacle has become a politicized platform for a particular agenda in the parish. Traffic around. 
either you can build more roads or you can get some of the traffic off the road by this land. And I think that's very important. It also retains the value of your house, which is very important to you guys. Mm -hmm. I agree that PUDs and TNDs are not for everybody or every area. There are certain areas they fit in very well, very well, and can be very useful. A lot of telecom point. Um, the overlays, I'm, I'm, I'm not for that in the respect if it's going to hurt any type of growth, any type of uh, clean business function. Uh, that we just came through with the Holmes House, you can't, you can't have that. You can't stop something like that, and that's what part of this does. Right? Uh, and we had to study up on it. I could see where it'd be very useful uh, in some cases on the West Bank. Even. Uh, it's not for everybody. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say that. To agree with you this time, Pat. I, I, I feel too that uh, PUDs and SPUDs, TNDs, those things are suitable in certain places. They have they have their place. Certainly, we would need to do a lot of research to determine where those should be. But I too, like Ken, have traveled all over this country, and what I see are beautifully planned communities where children can be mentored by older folks in that community where people can get home and get off the road and get on the bike path and, and ride their bike up to the front to maybe they wouldn't even get to DWI if they could ride their bike to the pub they can, they can walk back home but uh, if these kinds of planned urban communities or planned unit communities whatever you want to call them are essential as we grow forward it is so important to me that we have our young people understand that the essential matters they can live in communities like they envision. And we don't have a vision at this point for what this parish is going to look like in 20 years. So a master plan with transportation, drainage, and a vision for what this parish is going to look like 20 years from now is so important. Otherwise, we're all going to be on the road traveling to see our grandchildren who will live after we have educated our children here at our expense, they will move away, they will live in other communities that have been more progressive, that have been willing to plan, that have been willing to be courageous and do some really difficult things, ask people for the money to prepare for drainage, to do transportation. We're not going to be able to just sit back and wait for the federal government to do this, and we certainly can't succeed, succeed from the union. That didn't work for us well the last time either. So we have got to follow the rules. We have got to find a way to plan them, and we have got to keep our children in this community. against them in our area. Um, I'm, I'm against them in general, but as I've said before, people need voices, and I don't believe that I should be the one that says if <coughs> such and such area doesn't want them, that they shouldn't be able to have them. Um, but, with that being said, I am against them. The reason I'm against them. Um, whole property value, that's not true. They don't hold property value. Um, our property values decreased substantially when our neighborhood became a PUD. Well, when the PUD was first introduced and the idea that we were going to become a PUD, um, it was going to increase the number of smaller houses and that decreased the value of some of our houses. The next thing that I'm against the PUD for, it gives complete 100% um, control of the subdivision forever to the council or to the parish. I am completely against that. Um, not that our council at this time may not have, have, you know, may have our best interest, but what's to say that the next council has our best interest. And with a PUD, you do not have to present it to the people if it's considered a small change in the plan. What's, there's no measuring stick to what's to say it's a small change. 
It's just stated in the document a small change. Um, that's a few other reasons. Um, another thing that I'm against, at least for my area, and again, I'm very much for what the people want, and despite what I believe is best for my area, if everybody wants it, then, you know, that's up to them. But, um, no, but it's okay. Um, I want you to know there's been no leaks in your group that I knew this question was coming. I was hoping it was because I think it's a very important topic and I could give you 30, 40 minutes on it. As a retired professor, I do my homework. We've been talking about homework a lot tonight. So I brought on three articles. I can't go through them all here, but anybody wants to meet, I think you might already said after. I'd be glad to share them with you. One is why smart growth isn't as smart as, as it thinks it, it is. Published by Sam Smith. You know, of all places, it's in the Progressive Review. Another is The Folly of Small Growth by Randall O'Toole, who heads up the Thoreau Institute. And third, last but not least, these are just three of my favorites, and I'll give you dozens more. Why Smart Growth is Not Smart Economics by Howard Bacher, PhD, who works, by the way, in the Institute for Research and Economics and Taxation, and that's in Washington, D.C. Let's reduce this to nuts and bolts right here in Ascension Parish. Here's what we've seen. Keystone and Galvez has always been mentioned. That's truly a put, a disaster. As Tiffany said, she lives there. I believe that she probably knows. It's been mentioned that the other subdivision, Pelican Point, is a play. Don't be fooled, ladies and gentlemen. Look back and play on the zoning commission record when that project was proposed. It may have some elements, as some of the speakers said, of a pun. It's a nice subdivision and so forth, but it was not submitted as a pun. The reality is this. Smart growth is not smart. Okay? It actually does increase, decrease your property values, and as realtors, you're going to be selling cheaper properties. It results in zero lock-ons, unlike Mr. Shecks, I don't know if that. Recreational areas, unfortunately, that they promised, usually not completed. As a commissioner, people come out and say, oh, they said they were going to do this, and we don't have it. What do we do now? And then Paris says, well, we can't do nothing. Take them to court. I don't think that's a good remedy. And, of course, there's little or no road improvements, although they say they're going to get them. I've seen projects come before us, oh, we're going to give this land to the police department. Sheriff Wally will tell you, we don't want it. Our, our officers need to be in their patrol cars. Uh, we're going to give this to the fire department. Well, it's an 